Thank you, Chairman Neal. Chairman Neal, Ranking Member Tiberi, Member of the Subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this morning's hearing. Given the enormous need for infrastructure investment across the nation, I commend you for considering new ways to help bridge the existing gap in funding for projects that are critical to our nation's future. And I want to commend Ms. DeLauro for her proposal for an infrastructure bank. I know that there are many different ways to structure such a bank, including questions about funding and eligibility. Eligibility for which entities will be eligible to uh, participate in this bank and what types of projects will be eligible. So I want to focus today mostly on the, the eligibility. As Chairman Neal said, it's good to have a lot of different ideas, so I'm going to put out there a lot of ideas about what may be eligible and why this would be good. But before I begin, I want to emphasize that innovative proposals such as this should be viewed as a potential piece of a comprehensive solution for providing adequate levels of funding for infrastructure projects. If this were the only step we took, we'd still fall far short of the investments our nation needs. And while an infrastructure bank may play a role in moving certain projects forward, many major critical projects may never be able to generate the revenue needed to repay a loan. This is a point that must be considered in structuring the financing mechanisms of an infrastructure bank and in considering the extent to which this bank could fulfill our nation's infrastructure needs. Chairman Neal said, the American Society of Civil Engineers said that we need to invest $2.2 trillion over the next five years to bring the state of our country's public infrastructure up to a good condition. In order to begin addressing our surface transportation infrastructure needs, the House Subcommittee on Highways and Transit, chaired by Mr. Fazio, passed the blueprint of the Surface Transportation Authorization Act last June. In July, full committee chairman Jim Oberstar and Mr. DeFazio testified in front of the subcommittee regarding the potential mechanisms to fund the $500 billion legislation. Today, we are still challenged with finding a mechanism we can agree upon. America needs us to get that answer. The sooner the better, because a multi-year bill which is already overdue, is the best way to put people back to work quickly while making the long-term investment this country so badly needs. But even when we complete this bill, we will still have much work to do just on surface transportation. That is one reason why considering options like the establishment of a national infrastructure bank is so important. To fund infrastructure, state or local governments often use municipal bonds, which carry with them higher costs because of overhead and risk if they can even get these. Infrastructure banks can provide state, cities, and other in infrastructure developers with debt financing options that can allow projects to be built at lower cost. But the need to invest in infrastructure spans far beyond surface transportation. Aviation, drinking water and wastewater, energy and telecommunications infrastructure are all areas where infrastructure investment is needed. We may even want to consider an infrastructure bank for financing projects such as the acceleration of components of the next generation air transportation system, next gen, or positive train control, PTC, which will both increase transportation safety and efficiency. Finally, as chairman of the subcommittee on research and science education on the science and technology committee, I want to raise infrastructure needs for research. The 2005 survey of science and engineering research facilities found that academic institutions were deferring $3.5 billion in needed renovations. In hearings and in my meetings with academic leaders around the country, I've consistently heard that it has gotten much worse during this recession. This underinvestment means we are spending billions of research dollars inefficiently, but even worse, it means that we're in danger of losing our position as a worldwide leader in science and innovation to countries such as China. The America Competes Act, which we are considering today on the House floor, will help address some of this issue. But certainly there will be more that needs to be done for the infrastructure. So an infrastructure bank could certainly help with this problem, especially when it comes to cyber infrastructure. We're at a point where advances in computing power and network speeds are revolutionizing 
revolutionizing data intensive fields like medicine and ecology. We need to be making investments that go beyond the current generation of broadband de deployment and build the infrastructure we need for remote education, collaboration, and data analysis. I encourage the subcommittee to also consider these sorts of projects as possible targets for an infrastructure bank if we want to be successful in an increasingly competitive global economy. Thank you for the opportunity to testify this morning.